Next item we'd like to go over, probably we'll be using this a lot, it's called list. Uh, in other computer languages, sometimes it's called arrays and things like that. So, mathematical term, this um, is the same thing as a finite sequence is. All right, this is how you define a finite sequence. A sequence starts with this bracket and ends with this bracket, and you list uh, data. It could be numerical data like this or it can be strings, or it can be what is the other kind of variable, whatever, and you can put it in there. So why don't I go ahead and play with that first. So uh, first I'm showing that uh, what's stored in A. And this time I changed the A to, you know, crazy list. First B was a string set, as you can show, as you can see that was my name, and two is still the absolute constant. X is just a variable, so we repeated X there. And the last item was this expression with x equals a minus 1. a was a constant defined earlier. You plug it in there, the number was uh, 1 on 1. So that's one method of defining list. Simply you go ahead and type those items by itself. Next item I'd like to talk about is how to generate a long list. That's likely the type of list we're going to deal with when you do the cryptography uh, projects. There's this useful command called range. So range to uh, 20 is it's going to generate a number from 0, always done from 0, to um, 19, these are 20 items, or um, 1 less than 20, that's one way to look at. So here's the list. It generated um, range for starting from 0 to the 19. All right. So the, actually, this is the abbreviation of the following command, which is starting from zero index and less than, so greater than equal to zero and less than 20. I think that's the convention of all the ranges that, that they um, handle in this um, sage, which is the, this usually the mathematician's way of dealing with the partitioning the range. So let me show you the mathematical expression. You know, when mathematicians um, deals with the index indices, they partition these uh, indices into parts and pieces. They usually, it's a convention, they usually take this following one. It's starting left and lower bound is less than equal to, and you go right up to that uh, upper bound. So this is the convention, and I think that's exactly what uh, Sage is using. using. So here, if you have a range, it's going to be the integers starting from zero and right up to 20. So that's the last and equal to, and here's the last, and then you get exactly starting from zero all the way up to 19. So if you understand this indices, you are um, annoyed a little less um, by this um, indices that, that you're staring at it and the, what you actually get. So this, this is a list, so you can store in that a list like this. So that's going to be just defined and not showing it. So. Um, So if you um, insert another line like this, it's going to show what that uh, list is. So um, we have a list, and some of the operation is very similar to um, string operation. This would be a tenth element, because zero is the first element. So um, 11 means there's a tenth element in there. I think that's the tenth element. Let's see. Oh, correct. What's 11? I was wrong. It, it picks exactly the a label, so the zeroth uh, label, you know, zeroth element is that the first element, and so on. So that picks exactly, um, is indexed by these zero and one and two, and so on. That is self, the entry self is a index. So here's the length of that old element, starting from zero and at the 19 index altogether. That's a 20 element, so that's why it shows like this. I forgot to mention that when you um, select the portion of these list, you have to use this bracket instead of um, parentheses. So this will be the zeroth uh, item to the tenth item. So that uh, selects just this much of a, of a thing. Let's review the few other operations that were available for string sets. So I and create a two list of numbers from 0 to 4, this will be 0 to 2, right? So if you just add these two lists 
and it's going to put these two lists together. So you can see, you go from 0 to 4 up to here was this L1, and it continues with this L2, which is 0 to 2, things like that. So of course this is just useful to create a long list of consecutive integers, and what about um, the list of numbers that is not a consecutive integers, what you have to do, you have to play with this index. You have now k equals 0 and 1 and 2 and 3, and if you want to list using a different formula, then you have to use that um, some mathematical expression. For example, let's look at the following sequence. All right, let's look at this sequence here. K is, let's say it's starting from 0, and k plug in 0 here, that's going to be 0, when k equals 1, that's 1 half, and k equals 2, and 2 divided by 4 plus 1 is 5. That's the sequence. The first number was 0, and so on. So how are you going to generate this sequence in here? Of course, finite. We can display the infinite sequence in the say system. So let's do how to do that. So this is incomplete command just to show you the structure. This is the expression, that an, that I showed you earlier. That's where it's going to go. And this is the index variable k, like I showed in that expression earlier, and that there. And this is where we're selecting these k's. So k is going to go through L1. L1 was here starting from 0 and terminating at 4. So k is going to choose first element in L1, second element in L2, all the way to the last element in L, 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 um, L1. Sorry about L2, it's all in L1. Last element in here is 4. And it's going to calculate this value over and over in here and display it. So let's go and type this one in there. So here it is. That uh, an expression is going to be evaluated and k is going to change on over and over. So that's the syntax 4 there. Okay, so if you um, execute this, you will see four numbers listed. Five numbers. So here it is. The first one was 0, like we went through quickly when I introduced this expression and then one half, and next one was two, you know, and so on. So you can, of course, um, make a longer list. Or, instead of, you know, defining L1 like this, and if you know if this is the only time you're going to use, you don't have to define it like this. So you can just type in range in here instead of defining order like this. So let me go ahead and change that. Like this, you can just directly type in that list um, expression right here. There will be 10 items. Then you go through, and um, this shows this 10 item like that. Right? This is how you generate longer list with this expression in there. So I can, you can see that it's already um, using this k as a variable within this um, whole kind of local um, situation. So if it is um, appearing after this uh, syntax 4, I think it's automatically declare this k as a local variable and use that. Suppose this, is, uh, this expression is fairly complicated, and rather than retyping over and over, you have this one defined. And um, let's look at that case. So here's how you do it. Let's say f was actually a lot more complicated than this. Um, but you have defined it here and using here and there in different purposes. So you don't have to type it again. So that's the expression, and x is a variable. That's why I'm using it's complicated like this. I tried myself. You can't use x in there and just type in f there without these tags. It doesn't work. You have to separate it like this. This is the expression. Whenever you want to turn this one into numerical value, you have to use this substitute information. Okay? I mean, substitute command. So k is the index going through. This is 0 to 6. There's seven elements. And every time this x is replaced by that index in here and evaluated. So I rerun it, and I got rid of x, I don't know why it was there. Um, so this is the kind of same list you, you see there, I've just shortened it. All right, next useful thing is um, called this dictionary. Again, when I ran this command, it took a long time, and then when I looked it up here, and I could realize uh, it's communicating with the server, so it happened occasionally. So I got this list, and it's all about the labels. So 
these are the entries of this uh, where's my cursor these are the entry and this is the list of uh, four item the label of this um, index label of this one is zero and this one's one this one's two and this one's three okay so when you want to select that 0 0.841 in here then you have to use the zeroth item here like this so if you hit enter and it picks up if you want this is zero one two three it's a, th a third item um, in there it's labeled three and that's going to pick up there so there it's just built-in labels for the entries of that list what this dictionary does is that it gives you a total control on that how you're going to label those each of the entries of the list there so this is how you define a list with the label controlled in here called dictionary one big difference in this list is not a bracket it's a curly brace this is the beginning and the ending that determines and i want you to look at the first item here it's two um, entries are separated by this colon and this is a label which you can see is a string and this is numerical data this is a second entry the label is this string b and that the value of that second entry is actually this number 0 0.909 and here the third entry the label is a number 45 and its actual entry is this one so if you want um, the second label, second entry here is labeled by B, so you have to use uh, something like this. So you have to put that label, correct label there, to um, get this uh, um, the second entry before it was just labeled with 0 and 1. Now we have a control on that label. So this I, I, I thought this is going to be a very useful thing for our cryptography. Our English letter A will be represented by some numerical value and b's can be represented by some numerical value and things like that so here's another example the, the entry labeled by 45 uh, is negative 0.757 and that's what it's giving us all right this can be very useful for our cryptography projects